All right, so as an experiment, before we begin this video, smack like just to see what happens because science. What's happening guys, it's Shane here. So this video is going to be about the top five degrees that are recession proof. And this was a very highly requested one because we are arguably in a recession right now. I mean, anything could happen over the next few months due to the um, Cerveza antigen that will not be named due to monetization purposes. The market could rebound in a few months, who knows, but then again, maybe it doesn't. And in that case, we are definitely in a recession. Now, recently people have been getting laid off left and right, and my heart goes out to all those people. Now, my brother had to lay off all of his workers in the small business that he owns, and you know, it's been really tough to see him have to go through that. And no matter what job, degree, or industry you're in, the recession can affect everyone. But there are some professions and some industries that are way less affected than others as a whole. And there are some college degrees that can lead to you getting into a job that is basically recession proof, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So let's jump in right now with number five, which is business degrees. Now I'm gonna say it right now, this is probably gonna be the most controversial one on the list. Some would argue that this one shouldn't be on the list at all, whereas other people might say that it should be closer to number one. And this is what business degrees are all about. They're very risky and they have a lot of upside as well as a lot of downside. And this is definitely the most dangerous and risky choice on the list, but if you can handle it, the risk might pay off. <laughs> You could end up as the CEO or the vice president of a company, or you could end up working a dead-end cubicle job. So according to BLS statistics, professional and business services were hit the hardest by the 2008 recession. Then after the recession was over, they had one of the biggest recoveries. So as you can see, choosing a business degree is extremely boom or bust when it comes to a recession. So you might be asking yourself why I included it on the list. For one, if you're a top employee at a company, your chances of getting laid off are much lower. And obviously this isn't a sure thing. Sometimes top employees at companies are the ones who end up getting laid off if they find themselves in the wrong situation. But if you can stick with a company through the recession, that'll likely open up a lot of opportunities for you in the company itself. This way, the next time the economy recovers and a bull market comes again, you'll be able to take advantage. And I've gone over this a lot in other videos, I won't get too much into it, but basically high level executives have a lot of advantages in companies. For instance, they can take stock options and sometimes even partial ownership. So basically when the company prospers, so do they. Now on top of this, there are certain industries that you can position yourself in as a business major. That's one of the great things about being a business major is it's extremely flexible. And some examples of industries that do really well during a recession would be cosmetics, alcohol beverage manufacturing, grocery stores and discount retailers. And of course, talking about all these industries would be a completely different video. Let me know if you want me to make that. But overall, if you go into these industries, you're gonna set yourself up to have a very good chance of not getting fired and keeping your job. Overall, when it comes to a recession, it's always gonna be somewhat the luck of the draw, but there are things that you can do in order to increase your chances. So overall, getting a business degree can be risky, but it can also pay off really well. And that's why I decided to put it in the top five. Number four on the list is going to be education and other types of degrees that lead to you working a government job. A few other examples of these would be public administration, economics, and political science. Jobs that are essential for the government to continue running, such as teachers, police officers, will likely not be taken away. So just as an example for this video, let's go ahead and choose teachers. There may not be as much demand for teachers as other types of jobs that I usually talk about on this channel, but overall, once you've got a job, you're pretty safe. And this is the same for most of the other jobs when it comes to working for the government. Now technically you can work for the government with any degree, but statistics have shown that there are some degrees where you have a much better chance of getting a job in the government. Education is obviously one of them, although this is more geared to a state or local government type job. Sorry if that's unhelpful, but if you do want to get hired as a federal employee, there are a lot of other opportunities out there. But what's really helpful is the Bureau of Labor Statistics actually did publish a 24 page guide on exactly how to get a job with the federal government. And they make it ridiculously easy for you to research by breaking down the different types of jobs that you can apply to by college major. And they even include different types of careers that have a lot of job openings on their website. Now technically this guide was published about a decade ago and it would be nice if they come out with a new one, but I still think a lot of the tips that they have on here apply. And unsurprisingly, if you look at the list, a lot of the job openings, in fact, I'd say most of the job openings are going to be for the other types of degrees that I present on this list, such as the next one, which is engineering and math related degrees. 
Now I do always like to mention that these degrees are some of the hardest that you can get in college and this is basically due to all the high levels of burnout and dropout rates. And this is something that isn't talked about enough in my opinion. A lot of people go into these degrees just because everyone says they're really good and they don't really think about their passion or whether they're actually interested in it. A lot of people I know that were engineers basically told me that engineering school was one of the hardest things that they ever had to do in their life. But if you do have a passion for it and you're really smart, then it can be great. And the difficulty that does come along with these degrees means that when you do graduate, a lot of businesses know that these people are really smart and they're really hardworking. There's no guesswork involved there. And because of this, even in a recession, a lot of businesses will like to hire people that come from these types of majors. Now, if you look at the job outlook for engineering, and I've gone over this in other videos, it's probably slightly above average or average. For instance, mechanical engineers are expected to grow at about 4% in the next 10 years, which is around average. But where these degrees really shine is when it comes to flexibility and the fact that lots of businesses love to hire people who graduate with these majors, whether it has anything to do with their major or not. And when a recession hits, businesses tend to lay off their underperforming employees and keep their best ones. And when you go through a tough degree like this, it's sort of like proving that you can do your chores. And even if you do end up getting laid off, there's a good chance that you'll be able to quickly find another job. Now, another thing is during recessions, the government will often funnel money into the infrastructure of a country just to try to stimulate it. And for that reason, these types of jobs tend to do pretty well because engineering and math majors are pretty needed when it comes to maintaining and building the infrastructure. Now this one isn't as essential as some of the others on the list and the growth rate isn't as good, but overall it's still an extremely solid choice and you'll probably be okay. Next on the list, number two is going to be computer science and tech related degrees. Now this one is interesting because you might think that it's not quite as essential as all the other ones, but statistics have actually shown that this one has done pretty well. And I think the reason for this is because nearly every industry is being disrupted by technology. And so you can find a job in tech in pretty much any industry in the world. It used to be that you would only be able to find a job in the technology industry. Now you can find a job in pretty much any industry out there. And that's why BLS predicts that there's gonna be tons of jobs that are opening up out there, even though there's already over a million jobs available right now. And on top of that, these degrees are also extremely flexible. So let's say you're an industry that gets really rocked and you get laid off. You could easily just move into a different industry that's much more recession proof and get a job as a software engineer or a database architect. And the other great thing is there's a lot of different opportunities for you to work remotely. So you don't just have to only stick to the jobs in your local area. You could apply to a job that's across the country or even in a different country. That kind of flexibility is why this one is so high on the list. Information technology and information systems degrees fall under this category as well. These degrees are also really well respected because they're probably one of the harder ones out there, maybe not quite as hard as engineering, but companies basically know what they're getting when they hire a computer science graduate. I think this one does have some of the similar problems that business degrees have where there's a ton of upside, but there's also a little bit of downside as well. It can be pretty risky depending on what industry you're in, but overall, this is gonna be one of the safer ones when it comes to a recession. Next one on the list, the number one by a mile is going to be a medical degree. Without a doubt, jobs in medical professions have have some of the best future growth, basically no matter what education level you're looking at. If you wanna look at two-year degrees, like sonographer technician, it has a 14% growth rate. If you wanna look at a four-year degree, like registered nurse, it has a 12% growth rate, which is also ridiculously good, especially considering there's already three million jobs available. If you wanna look at a six-year degree, like nurse practitioner, it's even better. There's a 26% growth rate. And if you wanna look at an eight year degree like becoming a physician, for instance, it still has a very respectable 7% growth rate. And the BLS even states that healthcare occupations as a whole are expected to grow at an insane 14% over the next 10 years. And on top of that, they're going to add an incredible 1.9 million jobs to the economy, both of which are way ahead of any other occupation group, including business, technology, and engineering. On top of this, during a recession, health professions are known to be some of the most stable professions that you can get into. During the 2008 recession, for instance, when nearly every other type of profession lost tons and tons of of jobs, health professions remain stable, pretty much unaffected. And even during the recent situation, healthcare workers have arguably been working even more than they usually do. And you might argue that this isn't necessarily a good thing, that might not actually be good for their health, but I think you get my point here. It pretty much doesn't matter what happens. Most health professions are basically the definition of essential and they're always going to be around no matter what, as long as you have a society. Now, of course, if you nitpick and look really close, there's always gonna be exceptions to this rule, but overall, 
healthcare is number one by a mile. Make sure to watch my videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and then comment down below any ideas or thoughts you have on the video. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.